So please take note of that and feel free to reach out uh, to us directly if you have any other thoughts after this meeting. And with that, let's get started. Uh, we have quite a lot to cover today. Um, at what we what we feel is going to be the first of many public meetings on the topic of transit service reductions. So jumping in, um, here is a quick overview of the, um, the the transit services that Tempe offers today. Uh, we consider our transit network to be multimodal, meaning we offer a wide variety of transportation options for people to consider. And those options include local bus routes on our major arterial streets, the orbit circulator system, which connects to many of our neighborhoods, three commuter express bus routes, complementary paratransit services, light rail, and then looking ahead, the Tempe streetcar. We've also made considerable improvements to our bicycle and pedestrian programs over the years um, with our streetscape projects, multi-use paths, and things like that. And these improvements are complementary to our um, transit network as a whole. Now I'd like to provide a very high level explanation as to how our program is funded. The single largest contributor to Tempe's transit system is our very own transit tax, which was passed by the city of Tempe back in 1996. This is a one half percent sales tax dedicated to transit system improvements that does not sunset or expire. The ballot language for that initiative is actually included here on this slide on the right. Other revenue sources that we rely on include the regional Proposition 400 tax, which is a regional sales tax, which is due to expire in December of 2025. This funding also helps us to provide some of our transit services. We also receive federal funding for many of our capital expenditures, which include new vehicle purchases like new buses and also facility construction projects. Uh, fare collection is also another means that we have to subsidize our operation, although we have seen a decline in fare box recovery in recent years. So the big picture here is that many of our revenue sources depend on the state of the economy. And currently our expenditures for our transit program are exceeding the revenues that we're able to bring in. So with the intent of sustaining our transit system for years to come, we're anticipating the need to make some, some reductions to our transit program expenditures. And then here's an overview of what we're expecting that will look like. I wanna preface this by saying our plans are gonna be very fluid and flexible as we monitor and learn more about the health of the economy in the coming months. With that in mind, and because we want to hear from you and take the time to develop meaningful service changes that minimize impacts to the public, we're proposing a two to three year reduction process with service changes proposed incrementally every six months. We want to place an emphasis on data-driven decision-making. We have transit system performance data and also equity data that also must be considered. Again, we'll be focusing a lot of our efforts on outreach, so please get involved because we want to hear from you. Hey, Sam, I need to interrupt you for just a quick second. One thing we did forget to mention is that we do have Veronica and she is a Spanish translator uh, with us. And if anyone needs help, she can help with that. Um, you can type it into the chat or raise your hand and we will bring Veronica on. Thanks so much. Sorry to interrupt, Sam. No, thanks, Laura. That's a very important point. I'm glad you brought that up. Um, okay, so just jumping back in here, we've developed a two part survey that we're, we're actually releasing today. Um, and I'm going to get into the details of that survey next here. So I've mentioned that our survey is broken into two parts. The first part asks some questions about how you use the transit system today, and then your values and priorities for transit as a member of the Tempe community, because that's very important. We'd like to know what features of our transit system are most important to you. Is it frequency of service? Is it late night or early morning service? Or maybe the fact that our orbit system is free to ride? These are all things that we hear are valuable to the community. And essentially, we're trying to understand what areas we'd like to protect as we consider areas that we may need to propose future reductions of service. Then, moving through the survey, we get into some specific questions for a handful of proposed changes that, if advanced, would become effective in April. These are all proposed changes that staff have developed based on some recent studies and performance data 
to begin our service reduction process. And for each of these changes, and I'm going to go into each one in significant detail in the coming slides, we want to know if you'll be impacted, and if so, what level of impact the proposal will have on you. The first change we're proposing is to Route 32, for which the current route is shown here on this slide. So the route runs between Central Phoenix near the Biltmore area along 32nd Street serving Sky Harbor Airport and then head south on 40th Street before entering Tempe along Baseline Road where the route ends near Arizona Mills Mall. We're looking to adjust the south end of the route as shown here. Essentially, we're eliminating the duplication of service on Baseline Road, which is also served by routes 48 and 77. Connections between Route 32 and 77 will continue to be possible still at 40th Street and Baseline. Next, we're proposing a change to Route 40, which runs along Apache Boulevard to the Price Road Park and Ride in Tempe. Similarly, we're aiming to reduce the duplicated service here. The route would no longer operate in Tempe and would likely only run in Mesa between the Sycamore Transit Center and Superstition Springs Transit Center. Light Rail also runs east and west on Apache Boulevard in Tempe. And of course, that will continue to happen. The Light Rail will continue to do so. Orbit Mercury is also nearby, actually within a quarter mile just to the north on Victory Lane, as shown here. Our next proposed service change is to Route 72. This route runs north and south along Scottsdale and rural roads through Tempe, Scottsdale, and Chandler. Today, the route um, deviates from rural road into the downtown Tempe area. The Tempe Transportation Center is shown here, actually the area within the box on the map. So we're proposing an elimination of this deviation. The route would simply remain on Scottsdale and rural roads within Tempe. This is being proposed because there exist many other transit connectivity options between downtown Tempe and the transit center and rural roads. Um, these include the light rail, orbit Mars, the Mercury, the flash, and routes 30, 48, and 62. Additionally, the change will also be an improvement to some passengers who do not have a destination in downtown Tempe. They'll be able to travel north and south more efficiently along the rural roads. Next, we're proposing some significant changes to our express bus routes. Historically, we've shown a reduction in express bus ridership over the years, and we'd like to try and attract new ridership by making these routes more efficient um, and provide a more efficient connection between Central and South Tempe and downtown Phoenix. So to start, we're proposing an elimination of Route 520 and a re redesign of Route 521. The new Route 521 would run nonstop between the park and ride location at McClintock and Baseline and downtown Phoenix without making the lengthy deviation through the neighborhoods. And this will enable us to speed up the service and hopefully attract additional users because, again, we have noted a decline in ridership on these services. And then finally, Route 522, which is actually on the lower portion of these maps, it currently has two variations, one that runs to 48th Street and Elliott and another that runs to Elliott and River. We'll also be simplifying this route, and it will. It, the proposal is to run it nonstop between the park and ride location at Tempe Sports Complex and downtown Phoenix. Again, we want to know exactly how each of these proposed changes will impact you specifically. I emphasize the word proposed because we want your input to help guide the outcome of these decisions. And I'm going to show you exactly how to navigate to our survey. The website. The web page that we've set up for this project, uh, shown here on the slide, is tempe.gov forward slash transit changes. There's a link on that web page to take you to the survey, shown here um, with the arrow below. Once you arrive at the survey, please read through all the questions. Again, the first part of the survey is more geared towards the values of the community. And for example, one of the questions here is asking you to pick your top three most important features of our transit system that you'd like for us to try and maintain as we propose future reductions. The second part of the survey asks about each of the specific service changes that we're proposing for April 21. For each of these proposals, we'd like to know how you might be impacted. At the end of the survey, there's a section for you to include your contact information, which is optional, 
but we do highly recommend doing so because as I mentioned, we expect to be back with additional service change proposals over the next couple of years. And we'd like to hear from you as the process evolves. So we can definitely stay in touch through that mechanism here. Um, <clears throat> looking ahead, here's our timeline. We presented to the Transportation Commission and our council earlier this month. And here we are today at one of the public meetings. The public comment period will run from September 24th today uh, through October 5th, uh, 25th. And then Valley Metro will also be conducting some outreach for all transit changes that are proposed for the entire region, not just those here in Tempe. So please feel free to submit your feedback to them as well. Once we've analyzed all the feedback that we receive, we'll be returning to our Transportation Commission and Council with an update in December. And again, I want to mention that we expect this will be the first round of many meetings and presentations regarding transit service reductions. And at this time, we anticipate having another set of uh, service change proposals ready to present for consideration in the spring. And with that, I'm going to turn it over for any questions. Uh, the link to our webpage is listed here, as well as my contact information. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Laura, who's going to make sure we address any questions that you have for us. Thanks, Laura. You're welcome. Thanks for the presentation, Sam. Um, anyone have any questions? I'm not seeing any in the chat currently or in the Q&A. Uh, you can raise your hand. David has a question. David, I'm about to unmute you. David. David, you're unmuted. I, th I think he's muted, Laura. I still see the, the red microphone. You know, we had a delay on that. Okay. Can you hear? Try, try it now, David. Hello? We can hear you, David. Go for it. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out what kind of cost savings we're going to get from these route optimizations. <laughs> I don't really like the idea of changing the 72 in particular. Um, a 20 minute city can very quickly become a 40 minute city when you add in a 15, 20 minute transfer. And I'm really concerned that, especially as you know, our population ages, that increases our risk for heat related illness. And so I'm just trying to understand, is it really worth adding in these transfers for the savings that we're gonna get? Thank, thank you, David. I'm going to take a stab at that one. Um, you know, essentially, we, we have gone through and quantified, and I don't have the, the specific dollar amount by memory here, but just to, just to give you an idea of, of the scale of this, we're looking potentially at making, I mean, given our current project projections and where we're trying to get within the next few years, we're looking to save around $9.5 million annually um, from transit service operating funds. So um, each of the proposals presented here today, most of which save us a few hundred, a few hundred thousand dollars a year. Um, so by no means, this is not the entire picture. And definitely, um, I agree and understand that um, you know, some of these changes can potentially be very impactful. And, and that's why we're coming forward with these. Um, you know, of course, we're going to do a, a very thorough public process and we want to consider all of the feedback, just like yours, um, when selecting which of these changes move forward um, because we want to get to a place where we craft these reductions while minimizing um, the impacts on the community. So if you have any additional ideas for us, um, you know, in addition to the, the, the changes that we proposed here, and again, we will be probably bringing more back to you all in the spring, um, there is, I, I'd love to hear from you. You can reach out to me directly or in the survey, we do have specific questions open-ended questions um, where you may submit ideas or other comments like that uh, for us to consider. Thanks, David. Any follow-up questions, David? Hey, hey guys, this is, this is Eric. I, hopefully you can hear me. We can. You can see my the lighting in, in this office I'm at right now isn't great, but um, I just wanted to thank you, David, for that comment, as well as the comment that you made 
um, to council last Thursday, um, both today and the comment on last Thursday are, are great. And you stay pretty in touch with, and I think a lot of folks that are on the this uh, virtual meeting today stay pretty pretty in touch with what's happening with Tempe Transit. So I appreciate that, and just encourage you to to keep staying active so that um, you know you can see as we go through this process where where we need to go. As Sam has mentioned, we're you know we're going to keep checking um, the economic numbers in Tempe, and and checking that with where we're at with our with our um, particular fund and with public transit. Um, and I do take to heart um, your comments specific to the 72. Um, that's this the issue of the 72 and the proposed change has been something that has been talked about for maybe a decade or more. Um, I'm not sure if Sam said it, but we have a lot of challenges when, um, you know, pre COVID and assuming that we get back to some some uh, higher traffic time periods. 72 has been really challenged with um, getting stuck in downtown traffic at times. So uh, we definitely hear that there are concerns about the 72 change and we want to see what happens through this public process um, with, with how other folks feel. So I, again, David, appreciate your comments. David, you uh, have your hand raised again. You're unmuted if you want to follow up. Again, okay. Try now, David. Okay, maybe David's question got answered. Um, we have another question um, from Carol, and it is how often do the circulators run? Yep, so mo most of our circulators today uh, run every 15 minutes, Monday through Saturday. Um, on Sundays, we run every half an hour. There are a couple of exceptions to that. So the Flash, which is our downtown Tempe and ASU campus circulator, runs every 10 minutes during the daytime on weekdays only. Um, Orbit Mercury also runs every 10 minutes during the week. And um, Orbit Saturn runs every 30 minutes, seven days a week. Molly, did that answer your question or do you have a follow up? Or that, sorry, that was Carol. Carol, that was your question. Did you uh, want to follow up? Oh, no, I, can I talk? Oh, I'm unmuted. Yes. Um, yes. You okay, so I just want you to know I think that you, your proposals make sense. I do want to comment that. The more transfers that you have to have, it does reduce ridership. That's, you know, I'm sure that you know that and have done all sorts of studies on that. That being said, I have ridden to work either in downtown Phoenix or downtown Tempe every day, every work day of my life since uh, February 1st, 2006. So I am a definite uh, rider. Usually I ride the 521. However, I can totally understand you wanting to move um, to do a park and ride there because it takes time to go through all the neighborhoods. I think it would be um, much less um, hard, hard on the buses, you know, going through the neighborhoods and it would be much faster to have a park and ride. So I can understand you wanting to do that. But that was why I had the question about the circulators. And it's like there are circulators that go through the neighborhoods that if they can, if the park and rides would be a part of the circulators, like when, you know, when you have that would really be helpful so that people that are that use the circulators can get to the buses. And that, anyway, that's my comment. Thank you for that. Okay, if you don't have a follow up on uh, Molly had a question. She said, why did Tempe decide to eliminate 520? Pre COVID, this was my primary transportation in downtown Phoenix. Yes, def definitely. I can speak to that one. Um, thanks for the question, Molly. So, uh, as I had mentioned, all three of our express routes, to be honest, uh, have shown a decline in ridership over the years. And when we look at how our routes perform compared to all of the other express routes that come from all the other outlying cities 
into downtown Phoenix. Some of ours are amongst the lowest performing, and I, I actually believe the 520 is the, the lowest ridership express route in the entire region. And obviously, we, we do have a significant investment um, in, in providing, you know, commuter type service into downtown Phoenix. So we wanted to take a, a holistic look at our express bus network, all three routes, to see how we could potentially um, continue to serve existing riders, but also potentially attract new ridership, maybe by operating more efficiently. Um, you know, that's why we've, we're moving towards what's called the park and ride model. We're proposing to move towards it, I should say, um, where people, you know, there's a designated pickup point, the bus picks up there, um, travels to the freeway and goes directly um, and more efficiently to downtown Phoenix. I understand that for um, existing riders on some of these routes, there may be more significant impacts than that. And that's what we'd like to know um, from, from you all. But, um, you know, I'd, I'd definitely be interested in hearing if if the new model would continue to serve you or serve you well. Um, but, yeah, that's that's really the premise behind it. We we're in the middle. We're just wrapping up a, a really significant study uh, with MAG, the Maricopa Association of Governments. Um, they help us with some of our plan, uh, transit planning functions. And we took a look at all express routes in the region existing and also potential future routes. Um, and it was a recommendation from that study that we we work to consolidate routes 520 and 521 into a single more direct route, given the decline in ridership. But we show there's also a demand there um, when you model the catchment area of a park and ride. We think that if we make it more efficient, we do show potential to hopefully attract new riders. So that's our hope. Uh, but again, um, it's all dependent on what we hear from you all. And, um, and we'll go from there. So thanks for the question. Does anybody else have any questions? I am not seeing any hands. And I don't see anything in the chat. Okay, we do have another question uh, from Isabel. How will you spread this info to those affected without internet or access to this video? That's a really good question, Isabel. Um, you know, we will do our best to post things on the bus. We are posting to social media. Um, we are, and we are open to any ideas you you would have. Um, it, it is a challenge to reach people without internet or um, access to the computer. Um, but hopefully folks can use their mobile phones and give us some feedback and, and see this information there as well. Sam, I don't know if you want to add to that. No, I, 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 thanks, Laura. I think you covered that well. Um, yeah, we, we, we have a mechanism to, to distribute um, written comment cards as well and, and collect feedback that way. Um, you know, if we, if we find that somebody can't uh, log in, this of course, this will all be posted online, but to your point, maybe not everyone has access to the internet. So, um, you know, we're trying to be very cognizant of that and, and make sure that we're reaching everyone. As Laura mentioned, we did post a lot of signage all around the city at bus stops and on a lot of our buses um, and our transit center. So we're hoping to at least get the word out that we're, we're working on this. Um, and as additional layers of outreach come forward, uh, we'll make sure that we provide plenty of opportunity for for diff, you know people with different means to to get in touch with us. Okay, we have a, another. I guess I would call it a comment, or uh, maybe it's a question. Would the Tempe Library be a better park and ride option? Thanks. Thanks for that, Molly. Uh, you, you know, I'm not. I can't answer that today, but uh, definitely that's something that we can consider. Um, you know, as as we look into the the ideal park and ride location, um, the the study that that I mentioned before uh, analyzed existing park and ride locations, park and ride locations. Um, you know, and then we modeled the catchment area, meaning you know the the the, the zone around the park and ride that. That we feel uh, optimizes the you know captures the most amount of potential riders, um, but we could potentially look at uh, some new locations as well. 
Um, so thanks for the suggestion. Are there any other questions from the audience? Well, I just want to remind everyone that uh, it's it's a really important part of this outreach that you go to the survey at the tempe.gov uh, forward slash forum and, and tell us what you think. Uh, we love hearing from you here in person, but it's really important that we capture all that information so that we can get it to the city council. Um, I'm looking for further questions. Not seeing any. So if questions come to you after this meeting ends, uh, we are having another meeting on Saturday. Uh, that'll be at 11 o'clock. Um, all that information is again posted on our website, mp.gov forward slash transit changes. And you can always reach out to Sam. Uh, his information is here on the, uh, on the screen. Well, Sam, I'm not seeing any further questions. Should we hang around a little bit, folks? Or yeah, well, let's, let's, we can hang around for a couple more minutes, Laura, just to see if anything trickles in. And then, as Laura mentioned, you know, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you in the survey. And if you have something you want to reach out to me directly to discuss, um, you know, definitely we'd like to hear that as well. Okay, it looks like most of well, maybe half of the participants have, have dropped off. I think we'll wrap it up then. And, and again, we look forward to hearing from you all. Thank, thanks again for, for tuning in. Thanks all.